Yo, yo, it's a fairy. Hey, a lot of you guys realize I'm a respiratory therapist and I had a cadaver. And what they teach you in respiratory therapist school is to keep people alive who have medical conditions that can include holes in their chest wall. I'm going to discuss some of the videos that have been coming up and they come up every couple of years. Some random person will hyper inflate the lungs on a deer using air and it misleads a lot of people to think that the lungs are about the size of <laughs> three footballs like you just shoot them through the middle there's physiologic reasons that that is a hundred percent incorrect and i'm going to show you using a balloon we'll talk a little bit about pulmonary anatomy some of the amounts of gas that move in your lungs and what it's like to take the biggest breath you could ever take using household objects which is kind of my thing I just want you to understand the concept it won't be exact and for any of you medical professionals I'm trying to help the general public so if my nomenclature and all my words are not exactly anatom you know, medically sound easy with that we're trying to help the largest number of people understand basic concepts so stay tuned. Okay, the first thing you need to understand. That'll come later. This is the greatest representation of a lung and it's about the size of my lung, different shape. I'm 190 pounds, about six feet tall, average guy, um, except for this charming good looks. And if a deer's 190 pounds, let's just assume the same physiology for this um, discussion, because it really doesn't matter. The size of the lung uh, at rest is, uh, Irrelevant. You'll see why in a second. There's always, so lungs are a superstructure. They have tendons and everything keeping them together. And what you have to understand about a sponge, why it's a great example is, while sponges pick up liquid, your lung picks up air. And all these holes that are in here are airways at the most basic level. It's all backwards. Sponges pick up water. Got it. The same place they pick up water and hold it is all these tiny little holes throughout the lung, in my example here, down to this area here where you can't really see holes. There's still holes in it, and in your lungs there's millions of little things called alveoli. And they move around too. So, 190 pound sexy guy like me, in the lung is what's called two lungs. It's called residual volume. It's about a liter of gas all the time, never leaves. So concept one is lungs don't do this. And then go to that. They don't go to this and then blow up to this. There's a certain amount, and this is a great example. This always exists. And then there's what's called tidal volume. That's your walking around, typing on a computer, watching YouTube of the ranch ferry. You don't even realize you're breathing, you know, 12 times a minute, right? It happens just naturally. So we're going to guess. We're going to say that's one liter of gas. Eh, a little more. Okay. This is in your lungs all the time, in the deer's lungs all the time, never leaves. There's a whole reason behind that on gas exchange that I'm not going into. I may do later, not for this discussion. My average breath, average sexy adult male, six feet tall, 1,000 liters of gas in my lungs right now. They're inflated all the time. We established that. It's about 500 milliliters, half a liter, right? So we got a liter. When you're breathing and you don't know you're breathing, because you're breathing right now. Now that I've told you, you realize you're breathing. <laughs> <laughs> so 
So go back to static state and realize you're not breathing. It's half a liter. When a deer is walking through the woods, just being a deer, eating acorns and thinking everything's going to be fine, except you're in a tree. Not excited. That's what happens. The lungs do not get twice normal size and then reduce to nothing. They just increase by the amount of gas they need to exchange. And it's a very, like I said, you're sitting here not even realizing you're breathing until I say it, okay? The biggest breath you can take, me, is about three liters. All the way just until your chest hurts. Your lungs actually go down, push down on your diaphragm, push down on your stomach and expand greatly and in diameter. This is a great example. Most people think the lungs are just flat and they go this way. That's the misunderstanding when you see these hyperinflation videos. You see the lungs get long. They're contained by the diaphragm. They're contained by the chest wall. They can only go so far. So normal amount of gas in the lung is a thousand. Your tidal volume that you breathe when you're not thinking about it, and now that you're thinking about it, is 500 milliliters, my example there, right? Um, residual volume. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. It is never... I can't think of a situation where you would shoot at a deer that it would take the biggest breath it could possibly take before you shoot it. In fact, I thought about this a lot before I started doing this video, and I was thinking, even if they jump the string, what's your reaction when you get scared? <gasps> to go like that. It's not <gasps> like that. It's not. Like somebody, you know, comes around a corner and gives you the scare, or something crazy happens at night in the woods. <laughs> never happens to me because I'm tough. But when you jump or if you're, if you're shocked or you're surprised, like a deer would be when they jump the string, they're gonna go like that, right? They're gonna leave, breathe later, right? So when you see anybody blowing the lungs up to double the size, well, this is actually three times the size. So 1,000, you know, it's only double. <laughs> for you mathematicians and math heads out there. A thousand residual, 1500 tidal volume, and you could shoot them at the very peak of the inspiratory, normal inspiratory rate and be at 1500 liters. I wouldn't bet on that, but if you're that good and you've got some kind of infrared Superman skills that you wait until their leg is forward and they're at the top of the respiratory cycle because their lungs are as full as they're going to get. You, you are super special and you're the same guy who shoots between the ribs every time. So those guys, I can't beat you. But the odds of actually hitting, shooting a deer with residual volume is always there and at the top of the respiratory cycle is pretty low. And I can't, I really can't think of a situation where you would catch them with the biggest breath they've ever taken and their lungs are hyper inflated like the videos we've seen on the internet. So this is just raw physiology. You can go on this thing called the internet and look this stuff up because back to the beginning of the video, I'm an RT, spent a lot of time with a bunch of cardiologists and free therapy, especially doctors. And their job is to know every little nuance of the cardiopulmonary system so you don't die. Get in a car wreck and slam yourself and sever your clavicle and, and punch um, into the top of your lung, which happens a lot with seatbelts. All kind of rib injuries. And then of course, you know, penetrating objects, knives, swords. Somebody falls off a uh, fence and lands on something. 
their job is to know how much is in there, how to get it to stop and all that stuff. So this is just raw physiology. So any of the videos you see out there where you see the lung blown up as large as they could possibly make it, cut that in half because that's the math. Residual, peak of the inspiratory rate will allow for that. Okay, we'll say you can shoot them every time at the peak of the inspiratory rate and maximum breath like that. Okay. I just can't get past the fact that I don't think I've ever shot an animal that took the biggest inhale of their life. So this means your shot placement is still on the crease, lower one third, preferably, you know, in front of the crease, because if you catch them at the bottom of the respiratory cycle, their lung has decreased by roughly 30%, give or take. So the lung's doing this, and you just don't know when you're going to hit them. So you need to hit over here where the heart is, okay? But you do not want to be shooting the edges, and you do not want to assume that the lung went that big for half a second when you happen to have shot and your arrow happens to hit them. It's just not physiologically sound. Thanks for watching. Um, Subscribe, please, I guess, if you want to. It's a free country. You don't have to. Follow me on Instagram. I'm on Facebook, but not a lot. Primarily on Instagram and here on YouTube. Thanks for watching. See you later.